And we're back for part two of dependent sources. So in the first video, we mentioned that there were four different kinds of uh, de dependent sources, voltage controlled voltage sources, voltage controlled current sources, current controlled voltage sources, and current controlled current sources. So these are sources, the value of which is not fixed. It depends on some other parameter. It depends on a current or a voltage elsewhere in the circuit. So there's two broad classifications for the kinds of circuits. We have the uncoupled style, which is what we looked at in the first video, where basically they're sort of independent. The control uh, current or voltage is sort of independent of the dependent source. And then we have this coupled form that we're going to look at right now. The um, source, the dependent source, is in fact able to affect the control parameter. So it's kind of like it's controlling itself, sort of a circular kind of situation. Um, how we analyze these is a little bit more involved than in the uncoupled case, but it's not particularly difficult. Um, nodal analysis very often works well for these sorts of things. So we're going to look at a little circuit, not a very large circuit, with um, we're going to start off with a voltage source. Right, a, a normal independent voltage source here. And we're going to feed through a resistor and another resistor to ground and up here we're going to put in a um, dependent current source. Okay, and off of here this is going to come off to a resistor through a capacitor on this side and then down through another resistor. Alright, time for some values. Well this source over here we're going to say is uh, 0.1 volts at an angle of zero. There's our reference polarity for that. This is a 100 ohm resistor. I'm going to label this point as node A. Resistor down here is 1k ohm. These two resistors are going to be 10k and 20k. And the value of this capacitor is minus j100. All right. Um, the the, the uh, dependent current source value is going to be 200 times the current coming through this 100 ohm. So I'm going to call this current I sub x. And the value of this current source is 200 times I sub x. And what we're interested in finding over here is the voltage across this 10k. Right? And I'll just pull that out and say, hey, what is V10k? Right. How do we go about finding that? All right, the interesting thing here is that um, Ix coming in here on this node A, um, that combines with this other dependent current source, the 200 Ix, to produce a voltage across the 1K. Now that voltage interacts with the source voltage to produce a drop on the 100 ohm, which is, of course, what sets up the original Ix. So the value that is chosen for Ix affects this current, and those two currents together affect this voltage, but that voltage changes this voltage, which changes Ix. Right? It's kind of an interesting sort of situation that you have here. Well, like I said, we're going to use um, nodal analysis to solve this particular problem. Uh, just so that you understand, this is not just some weird abstract thing. In fact, this is a very simplified, highly simplified model for a bipolar junction transistor. Okay? All right, so where, where am I going to go here? Well, first of all, if I want to find um, the drop across the 10K, it would make sense if we could figure out what this impedance is, all right? Because voltage across 10K is the voltage from here to ground. Once I know what 200 IX is, once I know the value of the current source, that's the only thing coming through here, all right? So that current pulls this way. In other words, it's going to pull up through like this produce a voltage drop with a reference polarity of plus to minus ground up. All right. So if I just find what this lumped impedance is, I can just take the 200 IX, multiply that impedance, bingo, we'll have what our uh, V10K is. All right, so what is this? Well, this is 10K 
in parallel with this series combo, which is 20k in parallel with minus j100. Well, the minus j100 is not going to make a, a particularly large impact here. Um, very slight change compared to that 20k in terms of the phase angle. This is really pretty close to 6 and 2 thirds k when you get all done with it. But if we want to carry it out, you know, we can say that the result a little bit more accurately is 6.667k right, at an angle of it's a negative 95 milli-degrees. Right. Like I said, pretty darn close to 6 and 2 thirds k ohms. All right. Turn our attention back over to here. What we're going to do is what we would typically do in a KCL. All right, so if you're thinking, hey, I've got two nodes, let's do a nodal analysis, you can do that, but I'm going to show you a technique that's just a little bit um, a little bit quicker. All right? So looking at this, we have an IX coming in and a 200 IX coming in, and those two things are going to combine and produce the current down through the 1K. So we can say, right, what comes in has to equal what goes out. So what comes in is IX and 200 IX. And what comes out is um, the current through the 1K ohm. All right. All right. So first step here, we can just combine this up and say, well, this is 201 times IX has to equal I of 1K. Well, what we would usually do at this point is start to write these currents in terms of their Ohm's law equivalents, right? All right, so what is um, Ix in this case? Coming back over here, Ix is the voltage across the 100 ohm, all right? I'll just say, look, Ix is the voltage across the 100 ohm divided by 100 ohms, right? So what's the voltage across the 100 ohm? Well, it's this V in, V source, whatever you want to call it, okay, this 0.1 volts minus VA, all right? Tell you what, let's just call this, um, call it V in, all right? So uh, that's going to, like I said, be V in minus VA divided by 100 ohms, all right? Now, what is um, I of 1K? Well, that's just VA over 1K. Again, just straight Ohm's Law sorts of computations here. All right, so let's um, plug in what we do know. Um, you know, we, we don't know VA. That's up in the air. VN we do know, right? That's 0.1 at an angle of zero. So I'll plug those all back in here and see what we come up with, okay? Alrighty, so 201 times Ix All right, so we've got that, divide that by 100 ohms and that equals I1k VA over 1k Alright, now if I uh, multiply through 201 times the 0.1 is going to get us uh, 20.1, right? So that's going to be 20.1 on an angle of zero, sitting over 100 ohms. And then we're going to have a negative 201 over 100 times VA, and that equals VA over 1K. All right, so that's a nice constant, and then I can pull this uh, VA term over to the other side. All right, so um, 20.1 divided by 100 is going to give us 0 0.201 at an angle of zero. All right, and then we're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, 201 over 100 plus 1 over a K times VA. All right, so far so good? Great. So this turns into 
we got um, 2.01 plus a mil, basically, which is 2.011 times VA. So that we can just solve, find out what VA is. And that turns out to be just under 100 millivolts, right, because of that little bit. So we got 99.95, basically. E minus 3 at an angle of 0 volts. That's what VA is. All right? Okay, um, knowing that, we can turn around and go back and find what um, I sub X is. All right? Okay, so um, I'm going to take my source. All right, basically what I was doing back here, take your source. Subtract what the VA is. Oops, that's a 5 in there. Divide that by your 100 ohms, and we get a value for Ix. All right. Okay, so that works out to 0.497265. I'm going to put some digits in here. Even minus 6, the micro. That's a 6 over there, an angle is 0. Okay, amps. So we got some uh, half, a, basically half a microamp. Now that gets multiplied up by a factor of 200. Okay. So the, the dependent uh, current source, 200 IX, is just 200 times this value. So when we multiply this through, uh, we're going to wind up with just shy of 100, basically 99.45. Three amps, okay, so microamps. Take that current, pass it through the impedance we found back here, and we will have our voltage across to 10K. All right, so you just got about 100, roughly. You just want to do an approximation on this. About 100 uh, microamps. So if we want to be accurate about it, we'll take our 6.667k ohms at our milli degrees. Multiply that up, and you're going to wind up with a final value of just shy of two-thirds of a volt, 0.663 volts at a tiny little angle of negative 95 milli-degrees. Right. And there we have it. So that is the value of Ix that will establish the appropriate value here that will give us this current. Now, there is one thing. Um, this is the magnitude of the voltage. Notice originally when we drew this arrow, it's up plus to minus. So we're talking about if we were if we were looking at this as the as the normal output, if you will. Like if I took a scope probe and I put the the probe tip here, ground here, this would be our quote unquote hot or in phase point, right? This would be our reference point. I'd be looking at it as plus to minus. So in fact, this thing is actually flipped. And in fact, if we had a, a nice sine wave coming in over here that had that kind of polarity, if you looked at the voltage over here, this plus to minus thing is actually indicating it's going to get flipped upside down like that. So that's kind of interesting. So you could either put a minus sign in front of this, or you could um, just add 180 degrees to it. Okay. Either way. So it's basically just a sort of a flipped upside down version. I mean, the 95 milli-degrees, for the most part, is small enough to ignore. So that's the way we would approach it. This is um, you know, a nice dependent source where it's a, a coupled situation. The value of Ix is what controls this current source. 
But this current source can, in fact, you know, through the, the VA voltage, influence the original value of IX, right? So it's this kind of circular definition that we have. But there is, there is a solution to it, right? It's not like an infinite hall of mirrors that just regresses forever. There is a finite solution to this, right? And that's the way you would, um, the way you would attack this particular problem.